Hey everybody, how's it going? So last time we talked about this amazing Epiphone Les Paul Studio. And I love everything about it, and it's absolutely perfect, except it doesn't have a tremolo. Now that's not a shortcoming of the guitar, because Les Pauls don't have tremolo systems. And while I appreciate how solid it can be without having to worry about a tremolo, I use it way too much. Whenever I go to a guitar center and play one with a tremolo, my wife always makes fun of me and calls me Steve Vai, not because of how amazing I play, but because of how much I like to use the tremolo. So, I wanted to find something that I could put on this guitar to give it a tremolo system. Now there is the Floyd Rose FRX. That's very ambitious. It requires drilling into the headstock and replacing the nut. I'm okay with doing that, but not on this guitar. This is a very special guitar to me. Um, because it's a Christmas gift from my wife. It's the first time she ever bought me a guitar, and we've known each other, been together for about 10 years now, and she nailed it in every way. I love this guitar. It's perfect. Um, so I wanted to do something that was reversible, and I found this. So this is basically, there's a tremolo system called a Duesenberg Less Trem, and it's this. But this is not a Duesenberg Less Trem. This is by Geiger has a very generic name. Um, I will link it in the description if you're interested in it. Um, I'll let you know if you should buy it or not after we install it and try it out. But it's very simple. Now this is not, there's a little, uh, you can screw this in and get it to stay. But let's take that arm off for now. So basically what this is, is it replaces this piece right here. And it's totally reversible. So it just goes in where that normally would go. The strings go into it. And then it's got this little hinge system, and you use this to move it down. And the spring pushes it back up to its maximum point, turn the strings to zero. So it's, think of it kind of like a Bigsby, but not quite as big, bulky, or complicated. This is really a really cool invention. And uh, those less trims can be expensive. This is less than $100. I think this was 60 or $70 on Amazon. So I'll put the link in the description, and again, don't go buy it yet. Uh, either skip to the end or wait, and we'll talk about whether you should get one or not. Um, yeah, so the reason that I'm making this uh, video is there's not really any details about these things out there, this specific one anyway. There's some about the less trim, but when I was researching this, I couldn't really find anything on the Geiger version. Um, it's about $70 on Amazon, uh, give or take, at the moment. There's a gold one, and there's a silver one. Here's the fun thing. So I've had this for a little while. I shot an entire video um, and determined that it was a horrible product and a complete epic fail. Well, it was going to pass with flying colors, but then... Uh-oh... Well, I wasn't satisfied with just leaving it that way, and after thinking about it for a while, instead of releasing that video with that indictment, I figured I might as well do my due diligence and do everything. Now, in that replay that you just saw, uh, the string snapped. Um, I was noticing that this was very wobbly. Um, this, this would come off, and, and uh, this little round piece here that holds the tremolo arm was getting very, very loose to the point where it felt like it was gonna fall off. You can see inside there, there's a little nut that holds this on. So what I did was I actually uh, took the nut off, put some Loctite, tightened it up to my satisfaction, and left it for 24 hours. Now it appears to be pretty solid. It turns, but it stays put. Hopefully once we use it, it doesn't get super loose again, but we'll see. But that's not all. I also got a new bridge. You can see this one is Geiger as well, um, which, by the way, I really like Geiger. I have not bought a Geiger product I don't like. Um, this is a roller bridge, so the saddles are little wheels that spin. So when your strings are moving, when you're using the tremolo or bending or anything, uh, the string's going to move smoothly. Now, I had used some uh, lubricant in the saddles and the nut uh, before, and that didn't seem to work very well for this. Works pretty well normally. But for this thing, it didn't seem like it was cutting it. So I thought, all right, let's do it right. So I got that. 
I also am going to try something new here. This is from Geiger as well. This is a roller bridge. So it's a metal bridge. It's two pieces. There's a little base plate. That's what mounts to the guitar. The bridge itself has a little Allen screw that allows you to tighten it. Uh, you can raise and lower it with that screw as well. It has these little ball bearings that the, the strings will glide across. Um, so that should, in theory, eliminate any friction or binding at the nut. And then the last piece of this any system is going to be your tuners. So I got these locking Geiger tuners. They're based on the Grover Deco tuners. They have those really long, strange-looking tuning keys. Not sure that's going to look great on my Les Paul. I've got some other um, tuning key heads that I might put on there instead if I don't like the way that these look. Um, but yeah, we're going to give this another go, so let's go grab the Les Paul. The great part about most of these mods is that they're reversible. So this is just going to come off. These screws are just going to come out. We're going to screw the new trim down. This bridge is just going to pull off. The new one's going to go on. And then the nut, which is out of frame right now, I'm just going to remove the nut and put the new one in. So really, it's same with the tuners. Take the tuners out, put the new tuners in. None of this is irreversible. Um, even the nut, even though I'm going to put in a new nut, I can always put the old nut back in, assuming I'm able to remove it properly, which we'll go over when we get to that part. But the very first thing that we need to do here is we need to uh, remove the strings um, and take the bridge off. So we're going to do that. Before we do that, I just wanted to uh, mention something interesting here. So if you look at the A string, check it out. You see the, where the winding begins on the A string? They started, they started it really far up. I mean, usually, like if you look at the D string, you see how it starts winding right there where my finger is pointing? On the A string on, on this pack of strings, I noticed that it starts all the way up here. Um, it makes the string sound pretty bad. I knew I was going to be taking the strings off to install this thing anyway, so I just kind of left it, and I haven't gigged since I put these strings on. So, uh, yeah, I just thought that was kind of amusing. Uh, obviously, defects can happen with any manufacturing process for any product, uh, but I just wanted to call that out. I thought that was kind of interesting. So, uh, yeah, I don't think you'd have the problem, really, if you were using, like, a strat trim because you have the block, so this part would be in the block. But on this, it's actually hanging over the saddle, so it kind of causes it to deaden a little bit, uh, this string, compared to the others. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, let's get them off. We got the uh, strings off, so what you're gonna do is this will just pop off. These tail pieces are uh, pretty cool. The ones that have these uh, little clips here keeps it from falling out when the strings are taken off. I mean, it's nice. I've got no problem with what it came with. I wanna make that clear. It is perfect the way it is. But if you wanna use a tremolo system like this one, uh, you're probably gonna need to replace your bridge and your nut and maybe probably your tuners. So this is perfect as it is. I give it just about as close to a perfect score as I would let myself give something. <laughs> so uh, anyway, so once you've got that off, you're just gonna take these uh, posts, you're gonna take a flathead, and you're going to uh, unscrew those. So let me go grab one. Okay, let's uh, get these out now. Okay, these are out. So as you can see, there's a little hook on here, a little gap. That's the gap where the bridge hooks on. And then the uh, new one for the tremolo, you'll see that it doesn't have the gap. And the reason for that is, oh, I dropped it. The reason for, here's the other one. The other reason for that is you're gonna be screwing the tremolo system directly down flush against the body. It's not gonna hook onto this anywhere. It's just gonna be drilled straight down. To install this thing, it's very easy. You just line it up, take your, screws. So there's the first one. I'm just going to kind of get it started. I'm going to grab the other one, do the same thing on the other side. All right. And then we're going to screw it down all the way. All right. I screwed it in there pretty tight, but not so tight that I'm going to crack the finish because you definitely don't want to do that. That is possible to do where the finish can crack around the little ferrule where this screws in. So that's in there now. Now, when I originally did this, this is all I did. I just installed it, left it. If you're just doing super light tremolo usage, like, you know, surf kind of music or like Western cowboy chord kind of music, you could probably get away with doing it this way and just leaving it like this. But we're going to take it to the next level because uh, the way that I play, the kind of music that I like to play, 
It's going to require a much heavier usage of this tremolo, um, and I'm going to be gigging it, so it's got to be, you know, in tune as often as possible. So we're going to now talk about the bridge. The bridge just lifts out. Ta-da! See how hard that was to remove? <laughs> so there's the old bridge, and let's grab the new bridge. So here's the new bridge. As you can see, it's the same size. It says Geiger instead of Epiphone on the bottom. It's a little bit wider, interestingly. Um, it's about the same height. And then if you look at the saddle positions from the factory, they come just about the same as uh, Epiphone comes from the factory. The only difference being the high E string saddle is a little bit closer to the headstock than on the factory one. So since the intonation was pretty much perfect on the factory one, I'm going to uh, take a screwdriver and I'm going to move these saddles to match as close to this one as I possibly can, because um, that'll be a good starting point for the intonation. So to adjust that, you just take these flathead screws here and turn them, tighten them, loosen them. So I'm going to do that now. All right, I got it pretty close. As you can see, I got it about as close as I could. So. That'll be a good starting point. We can adjust the intonation after we get it strung up. Um, but once you get it all ready to go, you just stick it on. See how easy that was? Didn't need to do anything. It's perfect. Now, um, it fits on there with the existing, uh, existing posts, which is really nice. But I do want to check the ones that it came with and see if it's any tighter. So I checked it off camera, and it fits pretty much exactly the same. Here's the uh, other post. It's the same size. So there's a little bit of play in it, like this, right? But if I put it in here, it's got a little bit of play there, too. So the string tension will hold it on. Um, yeah, so that's all that needs to be done on this end. Okay, so let's uh, work on the tuners now. So these tuners are actually... Uh, pretty good. I, I don't have any issues with them at all. I want to make that very clear here. I don't have a problem with these tuners. I think they're great. Um, they hold tune really well. They work pretty awesome. Um, but if you're going to use, like I said before, if you're going to use this kind of a tremolo system, or really any kind of a tremolo system in any guitar, it would serve you well to change out the tuners. So, uh, to take the tuners out, this style anyway. Uh, these are kind of like Grovers. They don't have a Grover license anymore, I guess. So these are Wilkinson's. Uh, but on the bottom of each of these tuners, there's a screw. Uh, and so to take the tuner out, you get your Phillips and you just turn your screw until it comes out. So we're gonna start with this one first. Now we're gonna flip the guitar around. So the next thing that you do is you need to loosen this nut. So if you have something like this, um, this is from Music Nomad. It has, it's actually got several different sizes here. I think it's this uh, one on the bottom. It is. So you stick this on here and you just loosen it like that. Okay. And then the whole thing should just come out and it does. So here's your tuner. And then uh, what it leaves behind are these two pieces here. You've got this little threaded part with the bolt on top and a washer. So to keep it from getting lost, when I change tuners, I usually stick it back on and just kind of screw it in like that, keep it together. So we got one out. I'm going to go ahead and get the other ones out now. Got them all out. So uh, the first thing we want to do is do a test fitting. So uh, here's the new one. Um, See if I can get it to focus. As you can see, it says Geiker on the top where it would say Grover. And you just kind of see if it fits. And it does. Now I can tell you already that I don't like the way this looks. Uh, let me do the other side so that you can see what I'm talking about. You see that button? I don't think it looks right. So I'm going to see, I've got some other buttons. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get any of them to fit on any of these so uh, I'll be right back okay I didn't think it would work but it does and I'm super excited so uh, 
I got these, okay? These are like fake Grovers from Music Lily. These are the Economy. I needed some two new tuners for another guitar anyway, and I didn't care if they were locking, but I really like the heads on these. They're tulips, but they're black. I just thought that would look really cool on a guitar like this. Um, to take a head off, it's incredibly simple. All you do is, I'll just use this one as an example. You see that screw? Unscrew it, pull the head off. If the other one will fit, you can screw it on. Well, I took the head off of one of those tuners I just showed you and stuck it on the Geiger. Check it out. It fits perfectly. Stuck it on there and screwed it in. So now I've got some black tulip head, and these are nice. These are, these, uh, and those tuners were only $10. It's worth almost $10 just for the heads. And I also got a whole set of tuners out of them. So there we go. Um, I'm gonna install these. I'm really excited and they're locking. They've got this little locking wheel. So yeah, I'm gonna install these now. So uh, to install it, you uh, it's the reverse of what you already did to take the other ones off. So you stick it in right here. You take your bolt piece and you screw it down. Now I'm not gonna screw it too tight yet because I need to make sure that the screw hole on the back lines up. So I'm just gonna kind of get it in there so it's kind of just kind of hanging like that and I'm gonna flip it over. I flipped it over and uh, the screw hole on the back lines up perfectly. I mean, this truly is a drop-in replacement. So I'm gonna screw in the screw. You wanna tighten it so it doesn't really move too much with the screw. Then when you flip it over, you're gonna grab your tool and you're gonna tighten. And again, you don't wanna tighten it too much. There we go. And it's turning freely. You can't see it, let me move the camera. There it is. Turning freely. Now these are one to 21 ratio. Um, I think it was only 20 bucks for these tuners, which is crazy. One to 21 locking tuners. One to 21, effectively, the larger the ratio, or the smaller the ratio, uh, one to 21, for example, effectively means that turning it does less to the tuning, so you can get finer tuning. You know, if you've, if you've ever had a guitar where you turn the tuning peg and it jumps flat, sharp, flat, sharp, and you can't ever get it exactly where you want it, it's because it has a low ratio, like 1 to 14 or 1 to 15. If you get something like 1 to 21, then your turns do less, which allow you to more fine-tune it. So there we go. All right, it's going to take forever to do the rest of this, so I'm not going to do it all on tape. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and get the heads installed on the new tuners, and then I'm going to install the rest of the tuners. I got the new tuners in there, and I think they look awesome. I think it looks, I don't know, I really like the way that looks. Uh, Les Paul or a Gibson Epiphone style with those tulip head tuners. It's a very good look, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, we got that done. Let's move on to the last part, which is the nut. Okay, removing the nut is not as hard as it seems. Uh, the first thing you need to do is remove the truss rod cover. So I'm going to unscrew and take that off now. Got the truss rod cover off. So now, how do you take off a nut? Well, there's a bunch of different ways to do it, um, but I find one way to be the easiest. That is to take a rubber mallet and a wood block or some kind of block and just kind of lightly tap it until it is free. So let's grab those tools. So what you do here is you just lay a towel or something to protect your fingerboard. I got this little filing block and a mallet. And then you just kind of line it up. And then you just lightly tap the mallet. And that was it. There wasn't much holding that in, was there? Sometimes you get lucky and they come out real clean and there it is. You can see where they applied the glue. Uh, oh yeah, and we'll go over this when we install the new nut, but you do not, you do not want to put a line of super glue down the whole thing. That's overkill. The strings are going to hold it in place. The purpose of the glue is to hold it in place when there's no strings on it. Otherwise, your string tension is going to hold it on there. Now, you also don't want your string tension to pull your nut away, um, but you don't want to go overboard because if you ever want to replace that nut, the last thing you want is to have a messy, gross, gunked up uh, nut hole 
or nut slot, I should say. Man, these words are fun to say, aren't they? Anyway, we got that out, so uh, let's go ahead and get the new nut. All right, so I did a quick fitting here just to make sure it would fit, and it does. Looks really cool too. Um, but just let's go over what this is here. So usually when you uh, remove your nut, you're gonna need to file and make sure this is very flat in here and clean. Um, I didn't need to do much. It was pretty good as it was. Um, so here's the nut itself. It's got some ball bearings there. Um, your strings go in this side, come out this side. They float on top of these balls. And then the base plate is what actually gets glued into the nut slot and there's some little holes. So that serves two purposes. You've got some Allen heads on the top. And what that does is it keeps it from sliding back and forth. Um, and it also adjusts the height. So if you tighten it, it raises it a little bit. And if you loosen it, it'll lower it till it's down on the plate. I expect to have to raise it a little bit um, because as it is compared to the old one, it's a little bit shorter. So stick that back in there so you can see it. But basically you're gonna slide your plate in and this is the part that will get glued down. So get that in there real good. And then you grab your nut and there you go. So I'm gonna go ahead now and screw down the, uh, I'm sorry, glue down the base plate. Now one thing to say, be very careful when you do this because there's nothing holding that nut in at this point. So if you take all your strings off and then pick up your guitar, the nut's gonna go flying out. So keep that in mind. Got the nut in and uh, not going anywhere. That base plate's in there and stick that in there. I mean, <laughs> on top of the fact that it's gonna be functional, it looks really cool too. So let's uh, put the truss rod cover back in and uh, string it up. Let's string it. I'm not gonna video the whole stringing process, but what you do is you take your string and you pull it basically as tight as you can, okay? And while you're holding it, now down here there's a little slot, so you just slide it through, you slide it over your bridge, you pull it as tight as you can on your tuner, and then you tighten the tuner until it locks. Then you're gonna grab your nut, set it there, and then bring your string up into the nut. Now, what makes this a little bit more challenging is the fact that it is, uh, the nut's not actually held on with anything. So we're gonna have to probably do the higher string first um, to offset this, because if I let go of this, see how it, it's raising up? So you're gonna have to have all the strings on there for this to work. So I'm gonna kinda pull this as tight as I can, tighten it, okay? Then I'm going to grab a first string. Now that I've got that, I think we can now safely put the nut on without it flying off. So we're gonna take the nut, I'm gonna do the first string first. I'm gonna grab it, and put it in a slot. I'm gonna grab the sixth string, grab it, put it in the slot, and it's staying. So uh, there you go. So I'm gonna string it up the rest of the way, and then we're probably gonna have to adjust the height. So let's do that now. Okay, I got all the strings on and locked, and I can already tell that it's, that it's way too low. I mean, they're basically touching the fingerboard up here. So we're gonna grab our little Allen and we're gonna raise this a little bit. So I'm gonna stick this in here and I'm gonna do like, I don't know, a whole turn maybe? Yeah, whole turn. I'm gonna do that on all of them. So remember, tightening it makes it go higher. It seems to be a bit better. So, uh, Let's kind of get it relatively in tune. E string is in tune. That'd probably be good enough. So I'm gonna do the rest of the strings here and then I'll come back. It's all strung up and ready to go. I think it turned out really well as far as appearances. That nut, it's pretty cool looking, isn't it? There's those tuners with those tulip pegs. I love the way that looks. 
come down here. There's our roller bridge. There's our Geiger trim. I think it looks pretty good, guys. I mean, is this going to achieve my goal of being the ultimate perfect guitar? There's only one way to find out. Okay, so here we are. We've got it all ready to go. We've got the tremolo arm here ready to go. We've got the locking tuners, the rolling nut. Um, and let's see how it sounds. So I have it on a clean channel right now. Um, we're using this amp back here. This is a Raven RG60. Some of you are rolling your eyes, I know, but hey, that's what we're going to use today. Um, and I, all I've got running on it right now is a tube screamer through the front. Nothing is in the loop at the moment. So we're going to run this and just see how it sounds. <laughs> I'll say right off the bat, I can tell it sounds a little bit brighter because of this metal nut. I think it sounds really nice. If we put it down to the bridge. Sounds pretty good. Um, but let's actually use the arm. So, uh, I don't know, let's just do something like this. And it works pretty good. I like it. I mean, it doesn't have as much range as a Strat, but, uh... Let's kick it into some higher gain though. So I've turned on my Tone City Model M in the loop with a uh, analog delay and analog reverb pedal. See how it sounds. Alright, look, I'm not going to give up on this, okay? I'm not. Um, man, that pisses me off that this keeps happening. But I, I looked this up, and it turns out that this is a known issue with the less trim too, so like the name brand. This is obviously not the real one. This is like a knockoff version. Um, and people are saying that like these little round spots down here are get sharp and uh, cause the string to get cut at the ball end so right here and then on the other end where it opens up right here um i found a guy talking about this saying that you should file inside there so i did that i filed and rounded it off uh, and then i did something really stupid i wrapped the string with tape both the ball end and the uh actual part where it wraps i have no idea if this is going to work but this is painter's tape I also don't know if this is going to deaden this string or not, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and string it up now and see what happens. Okay, so sorry about the janky camera angle and stuff, but like I'm literally working on this right now on my workbench and I uh, wanted to show you. So you can see that string's in there wrapped in tape. Check it out. So here's how it sounds, just that string. It doesn't sound deader. didn't affect the sound at all actually um and it's wrapped pretty good with some tape so i mean so 
So it works now. I guess what I'm gonna have to do now is restring the whole guitar and wrap tape around every string. There we go. It looks absolutely ridiculous. But I wrapped all the strings in tape. So all these exposed edges are covered now. Now, I would think that if it was sharp enough to cut a string, it's probably gonna be sharp enough to cut tape. But now that's two layers it's gotta cut through. So I think this will probably do the trick. I mean, it looks kind of stupid, but uh, I think this will probably hold. All right, so here it is in all of its taped up glory down here. Um, we're just gonna try this again. I, I don't know, it's, it's hard to say because I could do this and it could work and then in five minutes it could break. So uh, that being said, let's see if, it's, uh, if it sounds any different. I don't think it will. So uh, let's go on the neck. This is with nothing clean um, on the Tube Screamer, Ibanez. with the Tone City Model M and the uh, reverb and the delay in the loop, the Tube Screamer is off. say that it sounds amazing it plays amazing but I'm so scared now I mean this is that was the second time second demo that I recorded string broke the second time hasn't broke yet um, but damn does that sound good and I think it's still in tune Because if the strings didn't break, this would be my personal perfect guitar. Because 
First of all, I love the way it looks. I love the color. It's got a rolling metal nut. It's got locking tuners. Aesthetically, it, I think it looks awesome. This thing looks kind of, uh, I mean, it kind of takes away from the classic look of a Les Paul. It's not as over the top as a Floyd Rose FRX or something like that, um, or as chunky as a Bigsby, you know? It's minimal enough that it doesn't really make it super ugly, but, uh, but as far as function, it does everything. I mean, it does everything. This guitar's got push-pull. We didn't really do that in the demo. But it's got push-pull, which means that it opens up so many tones. And the only thing I felt this guitar was missing was a tremolo. And I know that Les Pauls don't have tremolos. They just don't. That's fine. I know that. I thought I could retrofit one and make it work for me. And it does work. I've got the rolling bridge, the rolling nut, and the locking tuners. It does work, but the durability remains to be seen. I have no idea how durable this is going to be. I don't know if it's going to get me through a show or not. I'm tempted to take it off and throw a regular stop bar on here for my next gig in a couple days. Um, but the only way I'm going to know if it's going to hold up is to try it. So I am going to gig this. I'm going to take probably my SG or something else with me as a backup. Um, if a string snaps, I'll be ready to go. Grab something else. Um, as far as my recommendation, man, it's tough. If you're just going to be doing... That kind of stuff. Then get it. No questions asked. It's perfect. But if you're going to be doing... If you're going to be using it, you know, like that, it will do it, but I can't guarantee the strings aren't going to break. Now, if you get in here and you file all these really well and you polish them really well, it'll probably be fine. But don't expect it to just be a drop-in. It's not that simple. Even if you're just doing light surfy kind of stuff, you know, tremolo kind of stuff, real light, you're still going to want to do... A roller bridge, probably. Locking tuners, probably. Roller nut, I mean, maybe it's a gimmick. It works, and I will tell you, this is smooth. I mean, before, when I did this the first time, and I had my original nut, my original bridge, uh, that felt kind of hard to do. It's super easy to do now, and it returns to tune really well. It's a little bit out now, because half these strings on this guitar are brand new, but, um, yeah, my recommendation, if you're going to use it lightly, go for it. If you're going to use it heavily, be prepared to do some extra work. If you do want to take the chance and buy it, I will have a link in the description for you to buy it there. Um, it'll help the channel out if you do that. I'm also going to link the tuners. I'm going to link uh, the tuners I got the heads from, these tuning heads, um, and I'm going to list the bridge on there as well, uh, and the nut. So if you want to buy any of or all of these things, you can use those links. If you want to try Fender Play free for 14 days, you can use my link. And if you want to buy anything from the Fender shop, use my link as well. You can also follow us on social media. I thank you very, very much for watching. I appreciate it. Please subscribe if you like. Um, and one thing. This amp back here, you're probably like, what the hell's going on? Why is he using that? Isn't that the worst amp ever? Weren't those things in Guitar Center everywhere and then they just disappeared overnight? And now they're a laughing stock. Aren't they awful? Well, maybe next time we'll do a deeper dive into that and I can tell you, is the Raven RG60 the worst amp ever or is it a hidden gem? Find out next time. Thanks again. See you later. Keep on rocking.